Okay, hi there. Welcome to a micro video. And uh, in this video, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at some of the demand and the supply side factors that can cause volatility in the market for natural gas in the UK. Prices for natural gas have been highly uh, volatile in recent weeks and months. Uh, natural gas is a highly traded commodity and about half the gas consumed by UK households and businesses comes from the North Sea, uh, in particular from uh, Norway via two interconnectors from continental Europe as well, as well as, as well as liquefied natural gas LNG from the global market. And although Britain has left the European Union, we are still part of the Northwest European gas market. And the price we pay for our natural gas, the price per therm of, of energy, is determined mainly by wider market conditions. And we're going to look at some of the examples of supply and demand factors which can affect the price of gas, either upwards or downwards. Uh, but first, a bit of background on gas consumption in the UK, and then we'll look at what's happened to natural gas prices uh, just recently. So um, you can see this chart shows basically the primary energy consumption in the UK by source of fuel. And uh, you can see that overall oil and natural gas are far, far the most consumed primary energy fuels in the UK. Uh, coal demand has, uh, has really fallen off dramatically over the last 10, 20, 30 years, uh, whilst renewable energies on the right hand side there continued to experience uh, strong growth. Uh, Overall, uh, energy use in uh, the UK fell, of course, in 2020 because of the pandemic and lockdown. The, the level of real GDP in the UK fell by nearly 10% in 2020. And some of the demand for energy is, of course, is, of course, derived from the needs for energy, including industrial use and transport. Now, this is what's happened to gas prices based on day ahead baseload contracts. So this, if you like, this is the kind of uh, spot price for gas in the UK. And uh, in August 2021, this chart goes up to the end of the summer of 2021. The, the price had reached a new peak. In fact, it reached 110 pence per therm, uh, partly because of falling pipeline supplies from Norway and Russia, as well as increased uh, demand for gas as the economy picked up. So gas prices have clearly risen very sharply and the equilibrium price for gas has gone up. Well, what do we mean by the term equilibrium? Well, equilibrium is a state of balance or equality between market demand and supply. And at the equilibrium price, there's no excess supply, a surplus, or excess demand, a shortage. So we sometimes call the equilibrium price a market clearing price, where supply and demand are in balance, as they're shown in this simplified diagram here with uh, the price of gas on the y-axis and the quantity bought and sold on the x-axis. So the equilibrium here is P1, Q1. And of course, the price can change when there is a shift in either demand or supply, or perhaps even both. In this diagram, we see an increase in demand, a shift outwards of demand from D1 to D2, perhaps driven by faster growth of the economy. And that leads to a new equilibrium with a higher price, P2, and a greater quantity trade quantity traded Q2. So an outward shift in demand can cause an increase in price, uh, but an inward shift of supply can also cause a rise in price. So here supply shifted inwards from S1 to S2, and again that creates a new equilibrium price of P2 with a, a smaller quantity traded. So an inward shift of supply here causes a contraction up the demand curve to a new equilibrium. Well, let me take you through the exercise here. So we were talking about equilibrium prices in my lesson today. And I said to my students, well, using your knowledge of supply and demand factors, what is likely to happen to the price of natural gas in the following situations? So here's our little exercise to work through. And what I suggest is that you might want to take a screenshot of this or perhaps just press the video, press the pause button on the video and have a moment or two to work through these six changing factors in the market for natural gas and answer two questions. One, what, what do you think is likely to happen to the equilibrium price using supply and demand theory? And can you give a brief explanation of reasoning of which curve is shifted uh, in which direction? So here are six factors. So this is perhaps the moment for you to press the pause button on the video and have a go. 
let's work through these six factors. First of all, there's a very cold winter. What do you think could happen? Well, normally that would, uh, if there's a very cold winter, that would normally cause a rise in the price of gas because there's an outward shift of demand. Demand for gas, of course, to heat uh, homes and, and uh, business premises, etc. So very cold winter typically causes gas prices to go up. But if the winter is mild, if temperatures are higher than forecast, demand will be lower, the price will be, would be reducing. Second example, Russia increases their gas production available for export. So Russia under Putin might say, right, we, we're prepared to allow you to increase both production of gas and make more available for export. Likely price change would be a fall in price because effectively this decision by Russia causes an outward shift of the supply curve of gas. More is being made available at each and every price. Can you visualise the supply curve shifting outwards there? The third example, the UK government offers a subsidy to gas providers. Now, a subsidy is some kind of financial support. So if gas suppliers are being partly subsidised by the government, what's going to happen to the price? Well, in theory, it's going to go down because, again, a subsidy effectively causes an outward shift of supply. Our fourth example, the price of electricity increases. So... Often people have a choice between using gas and electric for their energy supply. They may not necessarily shift immediately and each and every time. They probably won't. But over time, if electricity becomes more expensive, then it's likely that gas would become more expensive because if gas and electricity are substitutes, then if electricity becomes more expensive, there might be an outward shift of demand for gas. This would happen over time, not instantaneously. People might shift their power supply away from electricity towards uh, gas cookers instead of electric ovens and so on. Fifth factor, the UK economy goes into a recession. We know we had a recession in 2020. What would happen if we had another downturn in GDP? Normally that would bring the price of gas down because the, the demand for gas would fall. Uh, Demand for gas is partly derived for the uses to which gas is put. So a recession would normally cause lower demand and hence lower prices. So typically when the world economy, for example, is slowing down, uh, when there's a contraction in real GDP in many big countries, gas-consuming nations, you'd expect gas prices to be lower. Final example, the UK government introduced the carbon tax on gas suppliers. So perhaps as part of their you know, commitment to climate change uh, policies, abatement of uh, cutting CO2 emissions. What would happen if gas supply businesses were uh, given a, a new carbon tax? Well, that would normally increase the price of gas. Why? Because a tax adds to the cost of suppliers and therefore causes an inward shift of supply. Now, in an exam, and certainly when you're revising, whenever you, whenever you take a market, Make sure you're confident and clear about uh, which factors cause a shift in demand and which factors cause a shift in supply for a particular product or service. And, you know, you can go through our videos on demand and supply to find that out. Most textbooks have good sections on conditions of demand compared with conditions of supply. So make sure you, you know those factors well uh, because typically exam questions, multiple choice, data response, even essay questions, uh, really try to get you to use those factors and apply them to a particular market, whatever the context is you're given. So, for example, lots of stories at the moment. The UK scrambles to contain gas price crisis. So during September and August of September, there were huge fears about the surging world price of gas, affecting not just gas suppliers themselves, many of whom have gone out of business because they can't make money having to buy gas very expensively in the wholesale markets, but they're capped in terms of what they can charge at retail level. But high gas prices affecting everything from uh, supply of products from meat to steel. Uh, Fertiliser plants closing down and therefore affecting the supply of, uh, of CO2 as well. But more recently, the price of gas seems to be falling again, which is I think, probably good news. <laughs> uh, in particular, Russia seems to be increasing its supply. Uh, the Russian president, Putin, orders Gazprom to begin filling storage facilities in the region from November, implying an increase in gas production, which will feed through to hopefully to lower gas prices for UK consumers going forward. So there we go. 
a quick look here at the supply and demand factors in the market for natural gas. Thanks for joining in. Take care, look after yourselves and uh, please do join in again sometime soon.